Hi everybody. Thanks for joining us back here in Oval Window Garage. And today we are gonna discuss how to fit camshaft, or like some people like to call it, the bump stick. I consider it the brains of the engine, <laughs> where the uh, crank, I'd consider the muscle, the oil pump, the heart, and the heads, the lungs of the whole system. Yeah, I know, you could probably take this and just toss it in, <laughs> but there are some tricks and fitment that you need to look for, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. As you can see, I installed the cam bearings already, and I have the lifters in here. And on the lifters, um, I'm uh, gonna rerun these. They still have their crown to them. Surprisingly, you know, since this engine's been together for so long, you gotta give uh, Brian uh, credit for running some good oil in this. Uh, and what I was really su surprised, uh, here I'll show you, we're running uh, silver line bearings in this, and I actually opt for the uh, dual thrust cam bearings. I know the factory only ran a single thrust, and since we're running a straight cut cam gear, it's probably all we really need to run, but it's not that much more to get the dual thrust. And when I mean dual thrust, um, they have this thrust service all the way around on both, both halves, this half and this half. The factory only had uh, one bearing that looked like this, and then the other bearings didn't have the thrust, they just kind of look like this. You had three of them in here. But where I'm getting at with that, uh, as you can see, this uh, cam bearing's got a tang. Volkswagen only put a tang on one half of the case. And I'm very surprised that this bearing here doesn't have a tang on it. Most of dual um, thrust cam bearings I buy have a tang on both bearings. And as you can see here in this case half, there's no spot for the tang. So you have uh, two options. You can either file a tang in the case or you can file the tang off the bearing. <laughs> Generally, I, I, that's what I normally do if you have to do that. Um, you know, it's pretty soft material and it comes off pretty easy. We'll install that over here. And the factory uh, basically uh, come to conclusion that they only needed one tang on that bearing. I decided to be important and, and light the situation up a little better. Hopefully we got some better lighting now. Like I said, this is a bump stick and it's uh, down a little bit. I measured the cam lobes and they're all evenly. I think this cam had, uh, we'll get the cheat book out here while I discuss this camshaft with you. I believe it's an old bug pack cam. Number on it is 4065-11. And what I could find on the internet was it was um, supposed to have a lift at the lobe. Okay, we're counting the lobe of about 325 thousandths. I think the specs were a little higher on, on the uh, internet than that. But like I said, I had an even, looks like I had 325, 322, and then 325, 325 on all four lobes. So one of them is a little shorter than the rest, but from where the specs are supposed to be, you know, it was a, a little, a little smaller, which is kind of standard, you know, with the, with a, a used cam that's measuring at the lobe. And then with a uh, one five ratio rocker, we'll have uh, 515 thousandths at the valve. I will be measuring that, to, you know, to double check that measurement and to double check the geometry of the rockers and make sure everything's kosher there. I haven't quite got the heads tore apart yet, but they were all sealing. So I'm assuming the valve guides are good, but I'm not gonna assume. I'm gonna get to there eventually here in the, in the future. But yeah, enough rambling. <laughs> first thing I like to do is just kind of set it in. And uh, we're gonna lube first. And I like to use this uh, Ultra Slick Permatex. And since we're just doing a little trial fitting, we're just gonna go sparingly on these just to kind of keep the bearings from getting scratched. I'm gonna to have to clean everything anyways. And as I'm doing this, I'll say that I've already installed the crank with the rods, and Jeremy did a great job of clearing the case because I had to take very little off. I took a little off on the roof of the case here. And I think the, the, uh, the crank probably was spun around just fine. I was just making a little extra clearance just to make sure. <laughs> okay, now to stick the bump stick in. <laughs> All right, I can already tell that we've got something hanging up here. And I already already kind of know what the what the deal is, and we'll show that to you here. I removed the cam bearing, the one with the thrust on it, which I would consider the front one, but technically if you look at the engine, it's the back one. 
That's the pulley side one. And if we go to stick it on here, there's no clearance. There is, but it's, but it's really tight. And that's what we don't want. Your uh, camshaft should have a little bit of a in play, just like your crank. You could put a dial indicator on and you know get your three to five thousands in play. I just like to feel it go click, click, click back and forth a little bit. I'm gonna show you the best way to make the clearance on this. So we're gonna set this down in a safe place. All I got here is a nice big RAS file. Pretty much all you gotta do is this a few times. And then check it. Said so these are somewhat soft. We'll do both sides. And now we'll clean it up and check it again. Probably have to do this a few times just to make sure everything clears. That's a little better, but we'll get to hit it a few more times and it'll probably be good. Now if you don't have a file like this, you could probably use a, uh, a block of wood in like 100 grit sandpaper. You maybe work down to like a 400 grit sandpaper. Another way to check these is see if you can get a 3000 feeler gauge to fit in, in here. If not, you know, get back to the file. All right, I got both bearings here. As you can see, this is a 3000 feeler gauge. And it fits in nicely all the way around. And what I did, other thing I did to these is, if you can see that little nick in there, I filed in a little oil groove. And it just helps keep this sur surface with some oil on it. And the reason we're doing this is so we don't create a whole bunch of friction and, you know, the oil can escape. You know, friction will cause things to seize up. So let's get this back in the engine case here. Re-oil them and refit the camshaft. There. Now it spins around. It's got a little, hear that? A little clunk. What will happen if you don't do this? And a um, way of seeing what happens is if you push the, the camshaft in here with that bearing that's tight and you go to spin it, it'll actually spin that bearing right out of the case. And then you'll know you, you have a problem or, or, or an issue. So the next thing we're gonna look at, and I can kind of see already that we already have some clearance because I'm able to do a full revolution with this camshaft. So we're gonna fit it over here, make sure that this side works. Same, and it spins around. Now the trick is to get you guys down in here to look at this. You get another set of feeler gauges out. So there's roughly uh, 70 thousandths here. We're gonna check our lobe to lifter clearance and yeah yeah we got we got a good uh 80 thousandths there but we're not going to stop at one we're going to check them all that's good now let's stick it back in this case half oh beautiful beautiful Beautiful. And beautiful. This is a, an important step. The last thing you want to do is <laughs> grind your cam lobe off <laughs> with a lifter. <laughs> Got to have some clearance there. Otherwise, you're going to wind up shoving the uh, lifter. You wind up shoving the lifter into the, the lifter bore. So you got to make sure you have the clearance. Clearance is always good. I don't mind if I take another seat. <laughs> Got a shreddick or shreddick. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Oil pump. I really like running these. Um, this is a 26 millimeter gear, which would be a, considered a high volume oil pump. And these are always nice because they come with gaskets, but when you're putting a new engine together, <laughs> you get a gasket kit with gaskets. But it's always nice to have extras. 
set those aside for right now. And we'll take a look at the pump here without dropping it over. Like in the previous video, um, this aftermarket camshaft, you can see it's got a bolt-on cam gear. And these are straight cut gears which are supposedly supposed to give you more horsepower, but less longevity, I guess you would say. The factory puts like a helo coil one in there. And technically, you really don't need to have the uh, dual thrust cam gears with these. And you probably should with the factory one, because <laughs> that, that helo coil is actually pushing the cam in one direction. Brand spanking new oil pump. I will go through and uh, do my porting trick to this. And as you can see, I've already drilled and tapped this hole because I'm going to plug that and I'll plug this. It's best to plug both of these. That way you don't have oil trying to escape out through this uh, surface here. All right, so we have to check the fitment of this oil pump to the camshaft and also make sure that we got the right oil pump because the dish cam will actually take a longer, or excuse me, take a shorter uh, snout here on the oil pump. So we're going to make sure that this is all correct here. If I can get it to go in. There we go. In, 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 in. Put that in there. All right, yeah. As you can see, the, the keyway does fit in there. Where the Super Beetle, they always call it the Super Beetle camshaft because it's a later model camshaft, it's, it's more dished. So that key would have to go in there a little further. That does fit. But the other thing we got to look for is the spacing between the oil pump here and these cam bolts. And as you can see, these clear and they clear with quite a bit of room. Thankfully, otherwise I got to go grind the back of the oil pump down <laughs> to make them fit. But that is nice. I make sure it's all, I actually fit it without the gasket because then I know that the gasket's going to, you know, put a little bit more space in there, making a little bit more clearance in there. That way you know everything clears. The other thing you want to do with these is you don't need the gears for it. You kind of want to make sure that this hole will line up with the other hole in the case. And it looks like it does. But if you can see the uh, size of this pickup hole, it's quite big compared to the size of this. That's why we got to kind of port it. I do have a, a video out there on that or I'll try to remember to uh, link it. The other thing I'm gonna have to focus on here, the final assembly, is actually making these studs longer. You can see they just barely stick out now. That's because this whole case is bigger than the factory one. There's barely enough room after I put the uh, oil pump cover on here to put a nut and a bowl. So I have to steal uh, off the old case, the studs, because we ran a 26 millimeter pump on the case um, prior to this one. So I'm hoping that those are longer. Now sometimes, you know, the factory puts uh, enough in here where you can actually back these out some, but I like to use as much thread as I can just to hold things together. All right, now the fun stuff. We've got the crank installed in one of the case halves. So what I have to do is find the marks, show you how to drop this camshaft in here really quickly. Earlier I showed you how to uh, mark the bearings, main bearings for uh, easy installation. I'm going to show you what I like to do and I'm surprised um, I used a paint pen. It's a little paint pen you rattle and you got to dab it to get the paint to come out of it and it's still it's still on this. <laughs> it's lasted 20 years through uh, a lot of oil slashing around but you can see I marked the dot here with white and then the two dots on here with white. Now the dots on this camshaft aren't uh, that hard to see but on the crank gear it's uh, really hard sometimes and make them really small. So now it just makes it easier to uh, find them. And then we will, you now let's roll it around a little bit closer. I like to kind of stick the gear on here to make sure it's all lined up. And then kind of roll it down into spot. And then we'll come around here. It'd be easier if I sit down again. You guys are going to think I'm getting lazy sitting down all the time, but it's easier on the GoPro. So we can kind of see that the gears do mesh up, and I'll, I'll make it a full revolution. There goes one pass. The crank spins twice as fast as the cam. We'll just double check, and there they are. They're lining back up again. But what I'm really concerned about here is making sure that the rods all clear the cam. 
And it looks like we're going to be in luck. You can see how close everything comes in here. So I'm surprised. Uh, I don't see where I ground on this cam at all. You can buy uh, cam shafts that have uh, indentations where they're kind of already pre-cleared. Sometimes you even still have to uh, go and grind on them, especially if you're running like a big crank like me, like an 84 millimeter. This is an 82. But yeah, you can see <laughs> that cam lobe comes really close. But yeah, yeah, we're we're good to go here. I'm pretty confident uh, that uh, I could put the short block together and everything would clear. But I'm not done yet. Um, I'm done for today. Um, but uh, the next step I'm going to do is I will put the other case half on here, and then I'm going to check the end play with the uh, crankshaft and the flywheel. Just double check that that's all good, making sure I get my shim count good, and then take it all back apart. It's going to be cleaned. And then we're going to put a fresh coat of paint on this case to make it look crystal clear and brand new. <laughs> but yeah, that's where we're going to leave it off today. <laughs> all right. That's all the fun stuff for today, everybody. But yeah. What's going on here? Out of battery. I can keep talking with you guys there. Um, yeah, that's about it for today. As you can see, you know, just because you're buying brand new parts doesn't mean they're going to fit. I still had to do with the rod bearings here. I still had to go and kind of massage those a little bit too. For some reason, when they stamped the tangs, they, they stamped them and they were, I don't know, they were a little off and a little, they wound up being a little fat. Either that or maybe it's just these rods, the uh, tang groove wasn't uh, to the proper specs. You know, something in there just wasn't right. So I did have to file on those a little bit to get them to, to fit in the, the rods good. But yeah, it's like that all the way through the build. <laughs> Seems to be that way um, all the way through the build on on these engines these days. I don't know who's uh, doing the quality check on everything, but yeah, there's just you know stuff you have to look for. Yeah, but that's why we uh, we double check everything, and that's why you know you pre-assemble everything before you do a final assembly, just to make sure that everything's good. Because you know you get a lot of money into this stuff, and the last thing you want to do is put it together and just tear it up. I mean. Trust me, <laughs> I've been there, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, that's one reason why I'm here. You know, teach you guys not to be like me. Yeah, we're done, so as always, keep shifting those gears, keep cruising, and always enjoy the ride. I'm out of here. Four hours just